All righty then. Hello, this is Lewis Herms and that gorgeous gentleman next to me with the thinker pose. That's Robert Imbriali. And today we are doing Q&A together. In fact, here's the cool thing. In the near future here, randomly, I will have a special secret guest on to do the Q&A with me, which should have a, bit, a lot of fun. So he's, he's my secret guest today. Just pretend like you've never seen him before. Um, anyways, please do us a favor and like, follow, and share, share, share. We have to beat these algorithms. We know they try to do everything they can to suppress us here, which means we're over to the target, which is awesome. Wow, 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 a lot going on. So today's Q&A will be an absolute blast, I'm sure. Let's bring on my buddy, Robert Imbriali. You sure it's going to be a blast? Is that how we look at these things? Nah, you know, it's, it's you know, all... You know, it's, it's funny. You and I are in this mode, Lewis, where we don't get away really from the news, right? So I, we just ran into town and we're driving back and uh, having this conversation with Phoebe in the car and we're talking about everything that's going on. It's like, it's funny because the conversation just never stops for us. It's not like, oh, we'll just do it for an hour and then we'll go on to something else. It's just not like that, is it? Well, I don't. I don't think we would be doing our our due diligence for the, we the people if if we just dove into the news for an hour. You and I both can agree, it's a it's right. a it's a more than full time deal for us to constantly. I mean, the first thing I do when I wake up in bed is start clicking on everything I can in X and Telegram and go all over the place. And and by that time, many people have already forwarded me videos from the East Coast and and links and we just have to dive into it because the reality is everything in time probably the last 50 years before this last seven eight years has been manufactured for our digestion the difference now is it's being interrupted and easily interpreted of what they're doing so it's a lot more work to do now but the rewards emotionally are just amazing i have a feeling we're getting closer to that tipping point because of the sheer volume of things that are happening like you look at uh just the news cycle today it's like you can't keep up yeah. how many universities are protesting today how you know it's just like every direction you look there's stuff happening and, and you know trump threatened with being gonna throw it in jail and and you know it's like well which one am i focused on and then he's then they got the jack smith and it's just like <laughs> you sit here and you go, well, which one should we pick to focus on? Can't focus on them all at once, right? Yeah, so yeah. I call that informational smog, which, by the way, is another mm -hmm. way, way they can affect your pineal gland. Just keep throwing all this information at you. Um, it's not a question, but I'm glad you brought up the Israel-Hamas-Palestine student um, protest thing. Because there's two things that are going on, and they're both, they're both lies, which is really, really sad. One is that all these students are pro-Hamas. That is 100% not the truth. That's a blatant media lie. Those are, those are probably uh, Jewish-run organizations that want to per perpetuate that narrative. That's not the truth. Some of them are, but they're mainly pro-Palestinian. A lot of the students are, are doing. Then you have the, the, the right media pull out the pictures of the funny colored hair people and look at, oh, they're LGBT and look at what Hamas would do to them. Da, 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 da. So they're, both sides are twisting the narrative, right? So even the students are twisting the narrative to, to, to make it look like it never involved. So the narratives are being completely twisted on both sides. And this is where we have to take a deep breath and go, okay, let's see it for what it is. Let's not believe the narrative because I can, I can tell you it is pretty weird right now that I think I'm closer aligned to the left-wing students than I am the conservative right. And it's only because the conservative white right has been brainwashed to believe Israel can do no wrong. Right. We Your audio went to nothing, Lewis. Hello? We there? Test, yep, test. There you are. You're right. Yep. Wow. I'm not even moving. Yep. 
Well, and I'm waiting on a new cord, folks. Sorry about that. Um, I'll start the sign. Oh, no, that'll become a, a satanic meme. Sorry. Any, <laughs> can't do that. Any, anyways, what happens is the, the Israel, the heads of Israel are deep state. The heads of Iran, deep state. The heads of the United States, deep state. The heads of Hamas, deep state. And that's the picture that everybody's ignoring and they're picking aside. Well, let me ask you a question. What's the number one thing that the Freemason satanic agenda needs you to do? They need you to pick a side. They need division. Yep. Yep. And people are falling right into that matrix. And the other piece, Lewis, that is very, very important here is that these protesters, there's only a percentage of them that are actually students. A lot of them are from the outside. They're getting actually paid uh, to be there. And how do you know that? Well, look at all the signs. All the signs are professionally produced. It's not crayons on a piece of cardboard anymore, uh, right? It's, it's their professionally produced signs. All the universities that are protesting have the same signs. Got to be coordinated, right? And they're paid. there's a lot of paid protesters. The police are arresting a lot of their real agitators, right? They always go for the head of the snake. So they arrest these agitators and they find out that none of the, the real agitators actually go to any of these schools. They're not registered. And I'm glad yeah. you said agitators because I was going to correct it. So, yes, they are. these are paid agitators. Exactly mm -hmm. what happened on January 6th. Correct. Exactly. Probably the same people. I, oh, absolutely. I would think it's the yeah. same, same group of people for, for sure. Interesting. So here's what's interesting, too. This is what the Truth Tour thought when I was running it. <laughs> Anybody that wasn't looking at your oh screen boy. and just listening, you lost. Oh boy. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Here you go. You have, you have to do this. You just have to make this happen. There you go. <laughs> uh, Am I gone? <clears throat> yeah, you're on now. Okay, cool. I can't blame it on uh, on the deep state. It's got, it's definitely on my side. All right, let's get into question one. Boom. And thank you, Lisa Richards, for being in the back end today and handling the, the production. You're doing an awesome job. Thank you. Lisa, are you okay with somebody saying thank you for being in the back end? It just felt... Oh! <laughs> oh! It's just... <laughs> Where's, where's, I done done. <laughs> all right. It's Let's not what was meant by that comment at all. <laughs> nothing. All right, here we go. Question number <clears throat> one. Are the white hats allowing Congress to send billions of dollars? So what's their agenda? Um, I can go first or you can go first, whatever you like. It, it depends who you who you follow. If you follow Ben Fulford, then they're they keep sending this money, but it never actually goes anywhere because there is no money to send. So that's one way of looking at it, right? The other way of looking at it is this money is going back into these politicians' pockets. It at one of his interviews when he was requesting more money and said something like, we're not even seeing 12% of it. I mean, he said this out loud and I go, was that on purpose that he said that, or uh, was that a calm? What's going on? Because he said it out loud when he's re so. It's almost like you have to send me eight times more than I need, and for in order for me to get what I what I need, because it all We've goes. We've sent back to more the money there already than we spend on the U.S. Navy. Uh, it's just it's so BS. It's but I think this Come is on. optics too. You know what I mean? So yeah. for <clears> you normies, what optics means is there's there's something going on in the background a lot different than than our perception because it's getting us to wake up right all right question two robert is the muslim brotherhood connected to zionism no idea <laughs> not my line of country as, as bannon used to say <laughs> this is uh, this is an area i'm, I'm not uh, educated in at all so i'm gonna okay. let you handle this one well it's okay it appears that the Muslim Brotherhood may have had, let's just say, Mossad influence 
if you want to call it Zionism, you can call it Zionism, but it, it appears that they've had Mossad help create it just like CIA helped create ISIS. So it's a, I would say it's more than likely because they, they need these false narratives. They, they always need a demon and a devil. I mean, many people don't know that um, um, Osama bin Laden was supposedly on our side before he wasn't. Well, he was CIA before, yeah. He was absolutely CIA before. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is the thing. That's the narrative that they don't want you to hear is we, we create the enemy, literally create the enemy. I mean, great, great example is yeah. we were fighting against Russia in a proxy war in Afghanistan. Most people don't understand. That was a proxy war. We were sending everything and training, 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 training. That's where Al-Qaeda was, was birthed. And then Al Qaeda became our enemy. Isn't that interesting? It's almost intentional, right? Because that's that's the whole game. They fund both sides of it. And in this last bill that Congress just passed, the money that was sent uh, over to Ukraine, oh, it also included uh, money to go to Israel and also to Palestine. Yeah. And people don't recognize that. It's like, wait a minute, we are literally funding both sides of the conflict. How could you possibly be on both sides right. of it? And they and, are every time. Yeah. And they'll they'll say, oh no no, but the money that went to Palestine was humanitarian support. Okay, they have the option to put the money where they want. We are not right. we're not there cashing checks on the ground and, right. and buying food for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just not happening. Yeah. And there's no restrictions on it, by the way. When when they send it, they may say that it's for humanitarian aid, but they can use it any way they'd like. Exactly. And there, there's no way we have the ability to follow up on any of it. No, and we what are you going to do? Ask for your money back? You know, it's just not going no, to happen. We want to fund both sides. That's just the way yeah. it is. The only reason why we sound sound like you're talking into a tin can. I don't know what's going on here. There's no batteries in that microphone because it back a lot of information. And Lewis and I are very clear that there's PSYOP on the other side, but there's also PSYOPs on our side. And we're victims of it, too. Uh, there's stuff that we report on and we talk about that may well be PSYOPs that we may find six months a year from now that we're totally wrong about it. Right. So it's it's one of these things. It's like, do you do you, ex you expose everything up front? No information war that's a big part of this is you got to hold back a lot and i think that's what's going on with this yeah th there's a clue to that too recently with the stormy daniels letter we saw yep. that stormy daniels letter two three years ago and if anybody yep. doesn't know what i'm talking about trump posted a stormy da daniels letter that said no he did not touch me and no i was not paid off pretty much and she signed it okay well, Trump just released that right, right, right when the, his trial was stor starting with Stormy Daniels. Yep. Okay. Yep. And do you think if, if I saw it two or three years ago that President Trump didn't already have it? Of course he already had it. Yeah. So that's, He has the original, I'm sure. <laughs> we only saw a graphic, a photo of it, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So they're holding on to all this stuff. All right. Question number four. How do you envision federal and state governments in the future after disclosure occurs? Ooh, that's easy. Uh, <laughs> as you heard me say many times, I believe 90% of all government will be bye-bye. If we're really going to do it right, it's absolutely unnecessary. The government is just, it's, the okay, the state and the federal government should pretty much be there for emergencies and our protections. That's the way it needs to work. That's the libertarian view. Generically, that's the libertarian view. Not what it is today, but that's really what it, the genesis of it was. Yep. Right? Absolutely. And the, small, the, small, small government, you protect us, you run the military, and you fire the police and that kind of thing, and, and the rest, your hands off. It's like we have freedom to do what we want. And the Tenth Amendment, states' rights, the states get to control everything else. It should never be at the federal level. It should always right. be the states. That's it should always right. be the states. Interesting enough, they've demonized libertarians like like crazy. It's a it's a it's a bad word. It's a dirty word to say libertarian, yeah. but they've done that on mm -hmm. purpose because if you go based on the original liber libertarian point of view, it's strictly what Robert was saying. 
but they've yeah. completely de government. demonized and not only demonized it that of course has been infiltrated and then you got a bunch of uh liberals in there and some weird stuff and some way right wingers and they're fighting against each other and they have no place in that party right yeah the, yeah i've followed uh, ron paul when uh, that was the big thing you know, years ago and they got exposed to libertarian thinking and it was like very small government we want you know there's no need for income tax there's no need for any of it uh, income tax in many respects is theft it's like it doesn't it's not necessary and you know to take 30 40 percent of your salary it's why i left montreal to be honest with you 50 percent of my salary was taxes and by the time you got your paycheck and you look at it it's like half of it went to taxes dollar for the government dollar for me it's the way it went <laughs> it's like crazy you know it's just one of these things it's like well why are they taking so much what's the deal what are we getting in return for it? Uh, we, we're getting, uh, you know, a government that, you know, no representation for us. They don't represent us. They just do whatever they want. They spend the money any way they want. And we're always saying, it's like, oh, they're spending your tax dollars. Actually, the tax dollars are this much of what they're spending. All the tax dollars are just a small portion of the budget that they spend. They're not taking in $7 trillion a year in taxes, right? They're taking in less than a trillion and they're spending, what, seven times that amount. So why do they even need the taxes if they're just printing it? Something to think about. They don't, yeah. It, well, taxes yeah. just hold us down too. Right. right. Because clearly they can manufacture their own money. They have all the minerals that they would ever want. Uh, so it's not an issue. They just want to hold us down. And it, you can't hold us down if it's a sales and to use tax because then it's an, it's an optional tax. Do I want to purchase this knowing there's going to be a 10% tax on it? That's an right. option. It'd be much more effective for any government in the world to have a sales and use tax versus any type of income tax, property tax, excise taxes, fuel taxes. It's a lot simpler just to do a sales and they know it. But the yeah. problem is what it wouldn't do is it would not suppress us and hold us down. They understand this and that's what it does. Yep. Interesting. And the economy would be on fire if we were making our full salary you know, minus any taxes, if they didn't take anything out of your paycheck every month. Uh, if you looked at that, it's like the economy would be on fire because people don't save, they spend. And spending is what's required to make an economy vibrant. It's always the question, do you want, do you want, to, you want to make the decision of where your money goes or do you want to give your money to the government and let them make the decision and they're going to give it to their cronies? Yeah, well, right? here's, the, here's the deal. There would never <laughs> be a bad or stalled economy unless the government is involved here's Correct. why because population routinely until poisoning has grown and grown and grown and grown like this right that automatically feeds the economy over enough so you always have a growth in the economy when you have a growth in the population but what the government does is they're messing with it all the time that's why you have ups and downs and all this stuff wouldn't exist if it was just a basic sales and use tax they let you alone the economy would always be on the ups, upscale. Again, they know it, but they, they want to manipulate our dollar. They want to manipulate the stock market. They, they definitely manipulate silver. So that this is, you know, some of the change that we're looking for. Right. All right. Next question. I like these questions. These people are doing a good job today. As Lewis's intriguing deuterium in water video sadly became a nothing burger, what tap water purifier device brand are you currently using and why? Okay. So I, I believe the in, intonation on this question because it says it was a nothing burger means it didn't get many views. Let me correct it. This was my most vid viewed video of all times. Got over 2.5 million views last year when I checked it. But here's why it appears that it didn't because it was immediately taken or it was one of the reasons why my YouTube account was deleted. By the time I pulled it over to Rumble, right, it, and claimed as it was theirs, right? But we, as of, uh, of over a year ago, actually, we counted and we, it was stolen 32 times. Now, even their videos seem to be taken down. You can almost not find it anywhere, which tells me, and by the way, you can still find it on Rumble, but it tells me the deuterium thing is an absolute, real deal and it is it is an epic disclosure in my opinion i'm not patting myself on my back it was a god thing i just happened to be talking to a a, a a doctor about something completely different 
And his assistant said, you know, hey, da, 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 da. and I started asking her questions. She goes, well, ask him. Literally, that was the that was the only reason why it ever happened. It was a total God thing. So deuterium yeah. is a big deal. Um, and it says, I think, I think Lewis, what they're saying with a nothing burger, what I'm reading here is that it didn't result in lawsuits. It didn't result in, you know what I mean? There was no action to follow up on the movie. I don't know how it could because deuterium is in at virtually 98% of all water sources on earth. So mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, and it's, it appeared based on some conversations I had, it's been there for thousands of years. Um, yeah. but still intentional by the way ironically so th that's yeah, this would be a good video for a water filter company that figured out how to get that out of the water yeah they can't because it's a it's a it's an isotope so the way mm -hmm. the way you can get it out of the water and i've tested it and i've tried to figure out if i could build a machine for it is deuterium freezes at one degree less fahrenheit than regular water right so what you have to do is you have to run the water over a cold plate and it slowly gets out now you can do it slowly you can do it in your own freezer is you start freezing the water and when it when the the top level is starts freezing right away you cut it out and then they've tested that and it's called ddw uh, deuterium depleted water and it actually works uh, but that's a lot of work i'm still looking into how to how to do it and it's not about making money it's just about having a solution for it because it's a real deal and for you guys who don't know what deuterium is, go find the video on deuterium. I believe it's called um, Trump Deuterium and Q or Q Trump and Deuterium. I made it years ago, um, but it was it was an interestingly viral video, just not on my platform. Um, now, what water filter do I use? Okay, so currently, and this is this is I have to be honest. I use a, a Kangen water filter with a pre-filter on it. Also, I was told that the Kangen water filter works on deuterium i have not seen any evidence of that i don't use it very often now i just drink spring water and i'm probably going to go to a different type of water soon my wife and i have been talking about this so currently i can't recommend anything for it um cl clearly i don't play games so we don't put it on the channel like we're selling a filter that's going to cure it because it wasn't about fear porn it was just about getting the word out at the time Still, I will be looking for solutions because I think it's a big deal in regards to life extension. But it's not really life extension, Robert, is it? In, if deuterium is a life suppression agent, you're not really extending the life. You're just opening up the suppression. Right. Yeah. Water is a tough topic. Uh, we go through that, too. And, you know, we're drinking bottled water, spring water, that kind of thing. And we're here on a farm. We think we, you know, we get well water. But, you know, the challenge we have is we're right next to Camp Pendleton. You know what I mean? It's like, how good can the water be in a lot of farms around here? A lot of fertilizers and pesticides and stuff that may be in that water. So we have it tested every once in a while. It's fairly clean. Uh, but then it goes through pumps and pipes and, and all kinds of stuff. And you go... You know, it's it's a really challenging, perplexing question. It's like, how do you get a clean source of water? How do you find it? Yeah, I've, I've never come up with the, the right answer to that because every source you look at, there's a downside to it. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And folks, we just put it in the chat. Uh, so click on the chat and come pause it and come right back here. And then you'll save it in, in, in an extra tab. And uh, Lisa, if we can put that in the description too for people, the video on deuterium, um, that would that would be great, and maybe it won't get taken down this time, and we can actually get views on our channel. Hey, go figure. Ooh, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? All right, next up. Who was the original Putin? Was he part of the deep state, and when was he replaced? I don't know the exact date when he was replaced. The original Putin. I believe was part of the deep state apparatus and the new Putin I do not believe is oh my god all Ukrainian lovers I know that's gonna hurt your feelings we're not anti-Ukraine well that we're not anti-Russian uh, we're uh, not uh, anti-Israel again we're if, not anti-Palestine if right? I say is Israel is doing a bad job over there some is not supported by the majority of Americans the plurality of Americans don't want any of it and we're hearing every single day more and more people are waking up, right? Uh, the people who watch, who are Fox snoozers, as I like to call them, uh, you know, they're getting groggy and they're starting to wake up and they're going, 
what's going on here? I don't understand, you know, what's going on. Well, this is what's happening is like, there's a division, there's the people who are running it. And then there's everyone who lives in it. It's not the same. I have a lot of people now talking about moving to Costa Rica to get out of it. I'm like, you know what? We're at the pinnacle here. You know, there's a good chance by the end of this year, we'll be able to see the light at the other side of this thing or sooner. Yeah. Or not sooner. time to run. I, I yeah. agree. Not time to run. All right. Look at this. What do we got there, Robert? Yep. The wonderful Matthew Geiger at Midas Gold Group. He does a wonderful job, folks. Give him a call. The number is on your screen, and it's MidasGoldGroup.com. All we can tell you about this guy is we vetted several, several gold and silver guys, and we said, no, 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 and they've offered us a ton of money, and we refused it because we didn't think it was the best for we the people. Why do I love Midas Gold Group? Because they, ha they house all their gold and silver themselves. They sell direct. Their prices are extraordinarily competitive, and if you want to flip over your IRAs or anything else, they actually have the knowledge on how to do that. And guess what? They answered the phone and we'll have a, a, a beautiful conversation with you. I can tell you most of the time people talk to Matt, he ends up selling them, sending them like a George magazine or something, which is pretty cool. So awesome guy. We're very happy to be uh, sponsored by Midas Gold Group. All right, back on to questions. All right, hang on. I'm just polishing my gold bar that he sent us because, you know. I'm glad you got one. <laughs> I, I got one. Teasing, people. We're teasing. No, uh, Matthew Geiger is amazing. I didn't know if I could speak when I was off screen. I think with the system, when you're off screen, you actually can't be heard by the audience. So that's why I didn't say anything. Matthew is a great guy. Uh, I met him, had a chance to chat with him uh, many times. We actually text back and forth uh, several times a week now. And uh, he's a real deal. You can give him a call and uh, have a conversation with them. See if investing in gold and silver is right for you. No hard selling. That's what we love about them. Not yep. gonna twist your arm, not gonna put you in a corner and beat you to until uh, you say yes. That's not the way he works. So uh, just average guy like us and just have a conversation with him. Hey, Robert, are you saying that when I do this, nobody can hear you? <laughs> Got the power. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's get into question seven. Over 6,000 patents have been hidden from us. Which five would be the most beneficial to humanity? Do you feel they will be released to us? Ooh, I love this question. You want me to take this one? Oh, yeah. All right. This, in no particular order, except maybe the first one, um, I believe we have something called Earth energy, that our energy can actually be pulled not just from the Earth, but from the ether and, and other sources, that if we learn that technology, it would actually we can produce energy at our house for free. Now, why do I put that number one? Think of the ramifications if we had free energy. Virtually everything else will come along really, really, really quick after that, right? Um, so number one for me is, is that. Something uh, close to my heart or the next couple I'm thinking of, earth housing, I call it. You can build houses from the earth without cutting down trees now that are more efficient. They actually, uh, there's the technology, I've seen some pre-patents that got lost on this. It's very interesting in, in the technology. It's almost a honeycomb deal with inside the walls and it 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 keeps your your temperature right about 72 all day long doesn't matter how hot how cold it is inside how amazing would that be um okay let's think about we just talked about deuterium right i be, i believe there there is already the technology although if i get time i'll try to develop myself that you can remove the deuterium from the water on a mass scale without costing too much you can buy ddw right now but it's outrageous it would it would it would break the bank right now if you tried to do it ddw deuterium depleted water so that being said um i also know firsthand because i was kind of involved in writing some information for some people in Africa a long time ago. I don't even think my wife knows this. And it was under the study that with 
one single solar pa panel and a unit that's on the ground in Africa, you literally can pull the moisture from the air, right, and develop water. Well, that's what I call a sub patent. There's a major patent out there that does this at a whole nother level that I don't think is available to the public. So that's really sad, but I know people are currently working on that technology. Um, this one's wacky. Uh, what if there's teleportation out there? Wouldn't that be an interesting way to travel? So think of the teleportation. I know people can already do that through remote viewing, so on and so forth, but I'm saying physically take your atoms, throw them in something, and reproduce it. Also very scary for me. I don't know if I would jump in that machine. Um, and what's the one we already know exists? Mind, body, frequency, healing, right? And I'm talking regrowing limbs, the whole thing. The reality is the frequency healing, we're, we're diving into it now. And this is, this is no offense to the people that are really into it, but they're still not experts. I believe they're still on the learning path for this. Because you really have to figure out which healing, which are healing frequencies and which can do damage. I believe in the old Tartarian buildings, as I call them, they probably figured this out because those are frequency healing centers with the beautiful bells, the pipe organs, and the sacred geometry within the ceilings and the walls. So those would be my probably my top five, I think. Replacements for lithium ion batteries would be mine. We have plasma batteries that would uh, get one charge a year. Uh, you'd have an iPad, iPhone, whatever that you'd never have to charge, you know, charge it up once a year and you're good. Think about what that would do for electric cars, for example. Uh, and of course, the med beds and the, the energy healing, which we know exists, uh, you know, that technology has been around since the 30s and has been suppressed. So we know it's it's been developed way beyond uh, what was available in the Rife system uh, way back when. Yep. And my personal favorite is I'm ready for a personal drone. Uh, there's no reason we need to be driving on roads. You know what I mean? <laughs> roads? Where we're going, oh, like we don't that, need more like, roads, like right? Like a drone pod, right? And just like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm hopping in. I'm going, baby. <laughs> that, that sounds awesome. That sounds like fun. So if, if we can't get the teleportation out, let's go for that. I, that seems more yeah. fun anyways because you get the experience. That's uh, right. Very cool. All righty. Next up. My favorite number, or one of my two favorite numbers. Number eight, where can people look for direction on rebuilding our society? Is there one person who can tackle everything? Yeah. Ooh, I have some answers on that. I don't yeah. know about one person. I yeah. can tell you some sources real quick. Um, I know Martin Geddes uh, is working on, which you'll love, Robert, um, technology for the future. Uh, web-based technology and things like this for the future. Ethan Lucas has something called the Parallel Society, which he's really, really worked on. And I can't grasp the name. I learned of this guy years, several years ago on Charlie Ward's show. And um, I actually talked to him once or twice. I wish I can get his name. I, I, I think he's from the UK. And he's developed these cities that that are independent of themselves right now I, i'm wondering if it's interesting that you hear remember i say all the time there's parallels like uh i believe you have the digital currency that's bad maybe the digital currency that that's good right the great reset well we really do need a a reset maybe there's a good one i also believe with these independent this self-sustaining cities is what i think they're called not 15 minute cities that's not what this is about right. these cities are self-sustained where where all the all the the food is grown with inside the city and processed with inside the city um the energy is self-sustained with inside the city uh, the manufacturers and everything just supplies the city now you you're not stuck in that city though you can go wherever you want to go it's just self-sustained and absolutely wholesome and 100 percent holistic so um i wish i really grasped his name somebody may say his name on here he used he used to be on charlie ward way back in the day i don't know if they had a falling out or something but i haven't seen i haven't heard of him on there for years 
I think the reality here is that a lot of the rebuilding is going to be up to us. We, you know, we're not going to have a governing body in the way that we do now. We're not going to have to go for building permits and all the rest of the nonsense we have to go through uh, at this point. We're going to have a lot of new, fresh ideas. There are a lot of backyard, uh, you know, inventors. I, I mean, my uncle was one of those. He would invent all kinds of things. Of course, it would never put it on the market or do anything with it because he just loved that process, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of that. There are people who know how to make cars uh, run uh, on hydrogen. Cars you can right. buy today, you can modify them and they'll run on hydrogen. So you fill the gas tank up with water uh, and it, it uh, you know, osmosis takes the hydrogen out of the water and it runs on that. And it's, all these backyard uh, things will come to fruition. I think a lot of people uh, will be surprised how much is available just in their own little community when yep. when the the restrictions are taken off i mean uh, you look at the restrictions why aren't these hydrogen cars out there well every time someone comes up with one oops they meet with an unfortunate accident you know hey, we see this the again and again through our chat robert it's it's michael tellinger one small town very cool so you guys can show go read his stuff is very <clears throat> very interesting so i think there mm -hmm. are some experts out there that you can refer to um, I yep. do not think there's one sole person, and I wouldn't want to put it in the hands of one person anyways. If yeah, exactly. If, well, they would put us in the same boat again. Yeah, well, if we're building communities, we need to get the community involved in this. Yep. All right. Does God use what? Oh, dates to wake us up. Example, 831, 1985 equals six zeros. Okay, zero, 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 one, three, zero, zero, zero. That's six, zero, three on each side of 13. Six times three, 18. Revelation is 13, 18. Well, it's fairly interesting. Um, I don't know what God does, to be honest with you. I believe God makes things available for man to make decisions on. I absolutely know that the baddies, I call them the satanic cabal, uses negative numerology and negative dates on and they have a calendar that we don't even know about just so we're very clear about that and they use their their certain calendar and i do believe that the good guys i call them gray hats are using numbers to combat them and frustrate them i think i've seen it several times where something happens on one of their satanic dates that just absolutely dismantles them um so I believe it's, you know, Ethan would tell you that they're spell casting in both directions. So maybe that would, is what it is. I can't speak for God. Um, he won't let me do that. I can just say it's, uh, I believe the people, you know, and are maybe inspired to do that. It makes sense to me. What you I say? think God does use dates to wake us up, especially blind dates. I was on one of those and I said, oh, by God, never again. Uh, my friend said, this is the perfect woman for you. And it's like, clearly you don't know who I am. <laughs> so, yeah, he does use dates in a different way. But, you know, he does use dates to wake us yes. up, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, true. Good point. All right, let's see. <clears throat> Next question. Could you please address the worshiping of the Son of God as versus the son of God. So S-U-N versus O-S-O-N. What do you think, Robert? For those of you listening on the podcast, that was nice of you to spell that out for us. Yes, exactly. I know not everybody watches the video. <laughs> uh, yes, well, the son of God, Jesus, obviously, that's the that's that uh, realm. And the, the son, worshiping the son, well, depends how, you know, what your beliefs are about all that. Because in the Bible, it says specifically not to worship anything other than God, right? That's what we're taught. Uh, this is this is an interesting thing because it, it leads me to, well, there's the spiritual realm and then there's a the religious realm, right? There's always the, the discord there between those two. My view, they're all the same. We just give them a different name, but we're all praying to the same thing, no matter which side of the, this coin you fall on. Could be wrong, but that's, what, that's my belief on it. So I'm guessing that the, 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 this question is, is maybe referring to the manipulation of the word which is huge in the in the english language of course mm -hmm. yep where they even though they're saying the son of god it's a trick to get you worshiping s-u-n of god um and we don't know um it's, i can tell you that i'm i've been on the 
warpath lately on religion. If anybody looks at my posts, they they can they can tell that. Um, in fact, uh, I'll read. Have you something. noticed you're not the only one though? I've noticed a lot of people on that warpath. I haven't paid attention. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have the bandwidth to pay attention to much. Mm -hmm. But um, I believe you because I be I believe we are working in a collective consciousness right now that's right. been stronger than ever before. So um, I created this meme. I, I guess I can't put on the screen, but it just says, God is the way, religion is division. And then today, I, I don't know why I was inspired to do this post, so it goes along with this. Um, of course, I had to put at the beginning trigger alert because people get triggered by religious conversations, for sure. I put, confusion is the work of the devil. Here's an example. Christianity has 45,000 denominations to choose from. So let's look at the wordplay. Denom, or is it demon? Men, not God, because of their ego-driven agendas created 45,000 different forms of religion. Therefore, man had to create non-denominational churches to maximize the size of their flock. Huh. What are a group of sheep called? A flock. The Bible indicates over 40 times that the temple is your body. Where are the temples located? Hmm. Where are the temples when Christ was teaching outdoors in the fields? In our heads. Where yep. Christ resides. Mm -hmm. The churches and religions have complicated something that is really quite simple. And in my opinion, simple is God's work. So I don't know if that helps or confuses, but that's just my take on what's really going on with all this stuff. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Lisa. So I created that, that meme. People said, you created it. Like, why didn't you put your logo on it? I don't know. I, I'm not looking for for credit. Let's just get it out there, though. It's, I think it's pretty cool. All right, next up, Roberto. Let's see what we have now. Let's see. Boom! Lisa's doing a great job back there helping us out. Amazing. Okay, question yeah. 11, my other favorite number. Now, the cat's <clears throat> out of the bag, you know my two favorite numbers. Always thought making a Jesus cross when praying... <laughs> Oh, there goes my dog. Okay, let's try this again. Always thought making a Jesus cross when praying represented the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I just heard that it actually symbolizes cutting off the heart and mind connection thoughts. Now, I believe there was an image connected to this. So if we, can, if we have that image, Lisa, cool, bring it up. If not, she gave me the finger, not the middle one. All right. <laughs> So, um, I'm not suggesting this is real. Let's everybody be very clear about that, okay? I'm not, I'm not suggesting this is what I believe in. This is just where this is coming from. So, notice, and I, do all, I always had an issue with this. My wife and I just happened to have a conversation about this today. Maybe she saw this, or I don't, I don't know, or maybe it's that collective consciousness again. But notice, first one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, number one, they're suggesting, goes to the heart, and then three and four, cut the heart off. That could be, I don't know. But what I've recognized for a long time, and I never could understand, why is the cross upside down when you do that? Think about that, folks. Why on earth is the cross upside down? And I'll tell you why I suggested it may be someplace else. Lisa, can we put me back on screen? So, think about this. Why doesn't it go from here to here, which is fine, to the heart, from the head to the heart? Remember we just talked about the temples? Why not go across here? Would that not be a perfect cross? Think about what's between these lines. That's where your pineal gland is. That's where Christ resides, is between the temples. So I'm just curious why. 
why doesn't it go like this? Just a thought. What's your thought, Robert? That was so funny because I had that same thought when I was growing up in the Catholic Church. It was like, why is it upside down? Why is this cross upside down? I don't get it. <laughs> yep. Very true. Very yeah. true. Very, very yeah. interesting, right? All right. Well, it so, wakes you up to the fact that you say the Father, the Son, and you say the Holy Spirit. And then you ask, okay, God, that's the Trinity, right? And then you say, okay, uh, what is the Holy Spirit? Where is the Holy Spirit? Where does that reside? Oh, that's within you. Oh, so I'm part of God. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a big stretch to say that, right, at that point. Right. All the religions preach it. They don't tell you that directly in, in the Catholic Church. You can't talk directly to God. You've got to talk to a priest and confess all your sins and everything. You have no direct connection. But wait a minute. He's already part of us. Why do I need him in the middle? Why do I need a middleman? Yeah. So at some point I woke up and I said, I don't need the middleman anymore. I'm just going direct. Right. You know? And you know why you need the middleman? Because that's how they perpetuate the church. Right. Right. As, as soon as they say, hey, guy, if, can you imagine standing, standing on a pulpit in front of 2,000 people and say, hey, you don't need me. You yep. can talk directly to God. You don't need this at all. <laughs> and, and they're probably afraid that their, their whole flock would just disappear all the they all, would. All they of a sudden. They'd never come back. Yeah. They, or, they, even at Christmas and Easter, they wouldn't show up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Unless, though, there are some great teachings. And man has to do those teachings if you're not going to be reading them. So I, I, I think their fear of control. I have this discussion with people all the time. In fact, today, um, between the Catholicism Protestant deal, if people understand the origins of that, what happened is um, the Protestants were very upset with the Catholics because the Catholics at the time, the Roman Catholics, don't want to upset everybody, the Roman Catholics were literally, when they spoke and in their writings at the time, were putting the Pope and the church before God every time. So the Protestants got very upset with that. And they started having these, you know, these amphitheater type get togethers. And they were saying, we need to stop this. Now, they weren't going to take up arms at the time, but then they started flyering literally handwritten flyers back in the day, you know, uh, nail them into a tree that says the Catholic Church cannot be putting uh, the Pope and the Church before God. So the recourse from the Catholic Church is what's very unusual. The Pope um, sought out uh, Ignatius of Loyola, right? And he had six students at the time, go figure six, right? And he turned them into the Jesuit military arm of the Catholic Church. And instead of saying, let's have a conversation about this, it was going. Yep. Just saying. Well, I had this uh, conversation with Scott McKay a couple of years back and I was talking to him about it. And I said, you know, if you think about religion, what religion was, religion was the original government. Right. So it was the controlling force, if you will, of a society uh, that is replaced by today by the government. That's why there's like separation of church and state. You can't have two powers. Right. So one has to supersede the other. Which one does? Well, in our country, it's it's you know, the law here. Uh, the government supersedes uh, religion. Right. But it wasn't meant to be that way. It was supposed to be the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Let me read a check. Yeah. I always want to give both sides. Uh, Joy 4920. Mm -hmm said the cross is the forehead to the solar plexus and left to right to the shoulders, okay? So that's not what's taught though. Maybe in your church it was, but what's taught is it was head to heart, right? And that creates an upside down cross. So maybe you're correct, that could have been the original purpose of it, right? But what's taught in a lot of mod modern churches is what's considered the upside down cross so um i great i'm glad you participated joy i think we may have a difference on modern uh catholicism versus the you know i think joy has it right i think we we did learn that in school that is is cross is lower lower than the heart uh, i i'm going to debate you, know? you robert it depends yeah. on the church 100 percent. i yeah. know so many people that were taught that it goes right to the heart Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to debate you on that because your church and the ones that I saw, and that's the problem. Is that not the problem? 
There's well, four that's different, why, that's why religion is challenging, different right? denominations yeah. that are all teaching something different. So, yeah. so I 100% agree with you that your church did that and Joyce Church probably did that. But then yeah. I've seen several of the others and many, many other people have seen it because they've talked to me about it the other way. So where did the manipulation come in? I mean, it, it's crazy, isn't it? And if, yep. if we're all just speaking of directly to God, we don't need these false interpretations. Bingo, bingo. Yep. And the church doesn't want you thinking that way because then you don't need them. They get in the way. Yeah, yeah very interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's roll to the next one. Who thought we knew so much about religion, huh? Yeah, I, I really don't. Um, but I'll be doing a documentary on it or <laughs> I'll learn more. <clears throat> All right, next question. If Donald Trump hypothetically sought your counsel on permanently solving the Israeli and Middle East problem and the Khazarian Mafia, what would you suggest? You want to go number one or number two on this? I think you need, you need to start this one off. I, All right. I guess this is some thought. So the answer is in the question. They need to solve the Khazarian Mafia issue, which would solve the Israeli and Middle East problem, right? right? The Khazarian Mafia has infiltrated virtually every segment of government in every country around the world. It's not right. just Israel and the United States. It's massive. It is massive, massive, massive. Even Germany during Hitler. Go figure that one out. Well, Switzerland all goes back there, right? Oh, don't yeah. Well, you know, you know what I, my thought on Switzerland, and I was gonna. Oh well, you know, we gotta we gotta cut the the head of the snake off, right? And that's really the the truth is the Kazarian mafia. And you read Fulford, I read him today. You know, the the newsletter that came out yesterday, and uh, he says they're done. It's just you know, there's just a little bit left on them. Who knows, right? We're not playing at that level. We don't know. Yeah. Well, how long are we done and a little bit left? That's a real question. How many yeah. times have we been done and there's a little bit left? Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think the well, answer you know what? If he makes enough predictions, eventually one of them is going to come true, and he's going to bank his whole career on that. Well, you know, the, See, broken, predicted the it. broken clock theory. You know, that's it's right twice exactly a day. Exactly right. Yep. Trust me. And I'm not accusing Ben of this, but several truthers out there do the same thing. And it's like every time they make a prediction that doesn't come true, nobody calls them on it. They just move on to the next right. prediction. <laughs> it's like, yep. all right, how MK ultra are we? I just wonder. Well, you know what it is, is Yes, so true, so true. Robert, what do we have here? Well, you can't even talk. And you're the best at this, too. This is my screwbiggov.com. Yeah, you can talk. They just can't hear you. That's what Robert said in the background. In fact, Robert's going to stick his hand in my back right now, and I'll tell you all about screwbiggov because he does such a great job. <laughs> um, so... At screwbiggub.com, you can find everything that, that we do in, in regards to films and, and swag, and uh, it links to any, any products that are there, and uh, most importantly, link, links to um, our social media, because the reality is we get torched on social media, so you can find all the links there. We always recommend getting on a newsletter there, because you're going to get an update. If for some reason we even depend, de de disappear from Rumble, you'll know exactly where to find us, so... Go to screwbiggub.com. Next up. How you keep up with Lewis. Lewis is a man who's always on the run. <laughs> My wife loves when you say that, by the way. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Your wife is easy to love. You know that. No, no, disagree 100%. No. Disagree. <laughs> no, don't disagree with that one. <laughs> She's like, oh my, here she's throwing shoes at me. Watch. Whoa, wait, hold it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Don't hit the fish tank, please. <laughs> I love you, honey. All right, here we go. Next up, Juan has been talking about Hunter's laptop being near a Dominion Center in Syria during the election. How can that be if we, FBI, supposedly had it and the information was getting out. Hmm, that's not a bad question. What you say? Uh, he didn't say the laptop. He said Hunter Biden personally was there, as I understood it. This was on the Truthathon. He had uh, he had mentioned that, and uh, he said Hunter Biden was within a mile of uh, 
the Dominion Center that was, quote-unquote, counting the elective votes, but they're never supposed to leave the county, and they were overseas being counted. Go figure. From machines that weren't connected to the Internet. Well, how'd that happen? We must have some really fancy technology there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my question, and I should have asked Juan this <clears> time, <throat> is, is, is Hunter really that important? Why, why would he have been monitoring things in Serbia at the time? Well, he and his dad are in business together, so I'm sure he was sent there to keep an eye on things. Well, that, no? that would mean we believe that this is not a fake president. And it's not. And certainly we all want that. We want them to be around a little bit longer. Uh, it's quite the industry that your pets only last a certain number of years after the pet passes away. What do people do? They go out and buy another one that keeps the industry going. It's not what we want to have. We want to see them last as long as they can because they are our friends. So you'll find the link, uh, depending on which channel you're watching it on, you'll find the link in the comments or uh, you can just go to SBG Pets if you're watching uh, us live here today. That is very important. And uh, boy, our cat today, it's incredible uh, what a difference it's made in him. So check it out. Give it, give it a try. Let your uh, animals try it for 30 days. You will see the difference in them, I promise. Beautiful. Thank you, Robert. Okay, so now, Robert, what we're going to do is we are going to click on questions that came in all capitals. So what do we have? Okay, this one's for you, Robert. Why do we drive on parkways and park on driveways? (laughs) Oh, oh. that's the opposite in, in London, in the UK, I think, isn't it? I don't know. I think I think that it's it's the, it's the wordplay, which I believe is, is part of our I believe our English language is a Babylonian language, in my opinion, and it was intentionally used for druidic spell casting and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm actually digging into it more um, for films that I'm doing in the future. So I think it was a fun question. Um, How much of our military is divided? Okay. <clears throat> That's a good so, question. Yeah, it is a great question. So I'm going to give you the short answer and then the long answer. The short answer is I really don't know, and I'm not going to pretend to know something I don't know. That being said, based on a lot of conversations I've had, I believe it was close to about when Trump first got into office, um, like, and, and when I say military, I'm talking about the leaders of the military, the rank and file. It's not, it's not fair to categorize them here because um, they're not making personal decisions. They're just following directions, which is the way the military is, operates. So, um, but that being said, I believe it was close to 50-50 about eight years ago. And I, I feel now, based on some conversations, which is good news, that it is way swinging towards the Patriots right now, um, which the faux Biden administration probably has a lot to do with that. But I also believe that they've, the good guys have eliminated, just look at all the, um, the high level service people that have been uh, loot, lost their complete commission, they've been demoted, or they're, they're even being thrown in jail. So that's, a, that's an interesting sign there. And I, I, I believe they're replacing them with people with like minds. So I believe it's very heavy, which would be posed really good for us. Now, uh, my wife and I's friend, Laura Worley, is not there yet. She believes, if I could speak for her, that based on the MK Ultra and everything, that the, mainly the military still is a, is a construct that's completely against we the people. Um, and she has some good information based on conversations that she has with survivors. I feel a little bit differently on that. What you say, Robert? Well, they turned around and sold them to basically our enemies, right? So what do we have left in America is my question. I don't know the answer to it, but it certainly makes me ask that question. Yeah, great. No? Yeah. Next up, is a land <clears throat> trust a good way to secure your private property? I have heard that it is. Um, I have no people that have done land trust, and they said it's very successful. I have no more information than that. I wish I could give you more. I really don't. I got to look that up. I need to know. 
Yeah, very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Lisa Richards, number 31. I got to know what the 31 stands for. Yes. Laugh out loud. Why do the questions have to be in all caps? Well, because we're acting as a corporation. <clears throat> no, actually, Perry, I, I know you're having <laughs> I, I know you're having fun and so are, so are we. It's just with hundreds of things flying through the chat. If they're in caps, we can see them a lot better on our screen, which is different than your screen. So that, that's why we do that. Um, dun, 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 not dun. for any other reason. We're not trying to do anything nefarious. <laughs> Hobbit says, why do you think deuterium is so hard to get out of the water? I kind of indicated this before. So the, it's, a, it's an isotope that's attached it's 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 actually hidden on a hydrogen molecule right so it's it, it's not as if it is something you can just throw a filter on or reverse osmosis because an isotope is extraordinarily small and it's stuck onto the hydrogen molecule and in fact that's where they get the word heavy water from so it's heavy water that we're really drinking you can go deeper into heavy water and you know the, the one other place i believe there's three places on earth where people are living to almost to 120 routinely and they have felt all of these have this certain water flow that flows over these glaciers and and when they testing the water after it comes off the gl glacier it's reduced in de in deuterium significantly because it's freezing at a at a lesser rate it's freezing at 31 degrees so if the water's flowing at 31 degrees it's freezing and the non-deuterium water doesn't freeze until 32 fahrenheit this is so that that's why um i hope that answered the question i'm freezing my water from now on i'm gonna throw the bottles in the freezer <laughs> is sbg pets available in canada it's yes and no the, they're having trouble getting the mushrooms into Canada because they're being lo they're being locked up at the border. It's just so disgusting, and they're 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 playing games with them. But you can still order for Canada. We're trying to find a solution right now to get the mushrooms up into Canada and keep the food from being scrutinized so much. And um, we'll just say we're really looking hard at it. I can just tell you that. I grew up in Canada. I grew up in Montreal. And, uh, you know, I was telling Phoebe that this morning. I said it's shocking to see how far uh, down the communist road Canada has, has slipped. Uh, and, and, you know, they're very, very conservative. They don't fight back. They're always very polite and, and everything. It's like, and their government just took full advantage of that. And, like, there's been no pushback. And it's just now they're waking up and they're going, what in the heck happened to our country? You know, sad to see. So this is interesting. Everything local is compromised, all corporations. My county has six registered in England. What's it going to take for the military to act? Opinion on this. You want to go first? I don't know what it's going to take. I, I keep asking for the, you know, what we look at is that tipping point. What's the tipping point? What is, how far does it have to go? And we said, okay, if Trump were to get indicted, the military would act, definitely. Well, he got indicted four times. Now he's in court and they're threatening to throw him in jail. Does he have to be actually thrown in jail in an orange jumpsuit before something happens? I don't know. But we keep looking for that. Where is that tipping point? Where is that tipping point? And you're right, corporations are, are complicit. Uh, you would get the right people in that you can trust and they can help you make decisions, so on and so forth. That alone would do it. So we need to look at the bigger picture which is looking at the smaller picture. What do I mean by that? The micro fixes the macro. So we need to work ourselves within our community and we need to put the pressure point at the right spots together at a time, one, two problems at a time, that's it. When you get three, four, five, six, they love it because they don't address anything whatsoever. So I would get hyper-focused. Now, the reason why we created the Freedom, Act, Freedom in Action app, which is now out and about on Android, it's for this specific reason, so we the people can make a difference. And it is a game changer. It's in beta testing right now, but please go, go to screwbiggub.com and download it. Help us beta test so we can officially launch this on every platform and get it, because this is where you can find out what's going on in your local area and organize together to make sure you're taking care of business. Micro fixes the macro. It's all about the local. 
Okay. So is the app good uh, for our fellow here, Waterboy uh, in uh, Wayer Boy, not Waterboy, Wayer Boy uh, in England? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just put a postal you know. code, code instead of a, a zip code in there. Okay. And if, cool. if there's a problem, let us know because it's supposed to be working for there. Excellent. Thank you for the question. Just know that miles is not kilometers because <laughs> it says miles on there. All right. <laughs> okay. What do you believe the system of enforcement for society will be post court system, given that we see the inherent weaknesses? I don't think Good we're going to have a post court Tom. system. I think we're going to have 10% of the court system or less than we see right now. And it, it, let's think about this. If we had no suppressing our technologies, right, raising, raising the chemicals and the bad influences on our mind and body, if all that was fixed, you wouldn't even need 10% of the court system. It could be even less because people inherently are good, in my opinion. They're not bad. And I believe, I believe most people, uh, or there's many people that are what I call neutral. And those neutrals can be swayed based on what society is doing and going on. So if we are good people in general, those neutrals would be acting appropriately. What you say? There's a lot to be said for gut health. There's a lot to be said for hormones being in, introduced into our food system that uh, shouldn't be there. Uh, people always say, you know, testosterone is toxic masculinity and it's wrong. It's actually the males who are estrogen dominant are the, he's strong, he's ready, he's protective, but he's not violent unless the saber toothed tiger is at the front door. And then he will protect the family. That's his job. That's his role. But a man with high testosterone is calm. You know, he's secure. He's confident. It's everything you know, a woman is attracted to. A man with high estrogen, which is what we're seeing in our society now, is impatient, is out of control, can definitely be violent at times. And people go, they don't recognize that this is, plays a big role. So you're right, Lewis. If you, if you can clean up the food supply... A lot of the crime that we're having isn't going to exist. You clean up the school systems, get rid of the indoctrination, get rid of the anger that we're seeing now in, uh, in our universities. Why are they, why are they uh, so angry? Well, they're indoctrinated. Not their fault necessarily. They're just being played, right? They're being taught things that aren't true. They're being taught to support things that uh, aren't correct uh, in many cases. And I'm not talking just about the Palestine thing or whatever, but you see this throughout, uh, throughout the years, throughout the generations. It's like this. You see that back in the 60s, the same thing. So we have a lot to clean up, but we clean up society. A lot of the crime goes away. It doesn't exist anymore because you won't have poor people on the street. You won't have people addicted to drugs, right? Why do people uh, get, in, get addicted to drugs? What's the biggest reason? Low self-esteem. Nobody loves them. They're outcasts. They're different, right? And they go, well, I have, their, I have no future, hence, well, I'm going to take these drugs because they make me feel better. So we can clean up a lot of this stuff. We could have a much better society, and that's my vision. Uh, you know, people say, well, what's it going to look like? Well, take the FDA out of the game. Gone. Take Big Pharma out of the game. Gone. Get the SSRI drugs out of the, out of the, the situation where, you know, people actually become uh, violent and suicidal because of those things. You start cleaning up all of that, what are you going to have for a society? Go look at the indigenous societies that aren't exposed to any of this. You don't have crime. You don't have any of this kind of stuff. I don't know. Just my thought. Yeah, well said. Um, we're going to have to hurry up, Robert, because we have a lot of questions, and I don't want to go too okay. much longer. Guys, we may not get to a lot of your questions, just so you know. There's a follow-up. here all night. Yeah, there's a follow-up <laughs> to the one about... Um, corporations before and he <clears throat> says but we're all everything's a corporation so pretty much saying so voting doesn't work notice I said free and fair elections a free election is not under the corporation so that would be right. part of election reform is not putting it in the corporations just so you're just so you're clear um, is there a known percentage of jabs that were placebo okay 
I don't know this. The only thing I know is, is I, my wife and I were blessed enough to have somebody that knows show us and completely doctored with some mm -hmm. of those pictures come really legitimate questions. So I think we should just keep an open mind for this at the moment. The only reason why I'm giving President Trump a, a temporary pass because all the wonderful things he's done working against the deep state. But that's it. And Robert and I know we've we, we've even said the second he's back in office, we're going to hold his feet to the fire because that's what we the people should do to our elected officials. Very, right. very, very true. Yep. ScrewBigGov.com. Keep up with Lewis. You want to find out more about what I'm up to, Renegade Media on Telegram. And I'll be posting videos there. I've been posting this morning. I'll be posting more stuff. And I thank you all for your comments on that on that page, too. I really appreciate that. I, I do read them. Um, That's a so great page, too. I think it's there. growing now for you a little bit, right? It's growing a little bit, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's more interactive, too, which is making it more fun. Yes, I agree. Love it. All right, Robert, it's been fun. We're going to play out our outro, guys. We really appreciate you now. Next time we do Q&A, there will be a secret guest. I don't know who it is. Ooh. Do you? Can't right. wait. And tomorrow, wait, we have the news tomorrow. Why don't you tell them mm -hmm. who we have on Thursday? This is be epic. Richard Gage is coming uh, to us on Thursday, and he is uh, one of the architects who helped debunk the whole 9-11 thing. And, and uh, when they realized that it was thermite and they realized it was detonated and they realized uh, they had a whole uh, conspiracy on their hands, um, he went all in and he's no longer with them, the architects. He's got his own organization, Richard Gage 911org And he's going to be talking to us specifically about World Trade Center 7, which, by the way, is a great way to red pill your friends. Why did World Trade Center 7 fall it wasn't hit by a plane, and no building in history has ever collapsed like that because of a fire, because these buildings are built with steel frames. So yeah. he's going to help uh, us understand what went on there. I'm looking forward to that interview. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Yep. We love you. Good night. Love you all.